to this part. All right. Uh, where are we? Your feet are killing me. Mm. Okay, so work at a stand, open a box. So there's a new box of cups, so here's your box. Right, and inside the box, on the first day, he took 30 cups. So inside the box, let's call the total amount. We don't know how much, let's call that X. Okay, so if you take 30 cups out, <coughs> right, and you call the total amount, now you have how much? So if you take 30, you now have X, the total amount, minus 30, right? So keep that in mind. Now in the second day, he took 50% of whatever was left over. So he took 15% of this amount here, right? The original amount minus 30 that he took the first day. So he took 15% of that. And that equals 90 cups. So if you take 15% or the original amount minus 30 cups he used in the first day, and you multiply that by 15%, which I'm gonna to change to a decimal, 0.5, 15, that equals 90. So 15% of whatever was inside minus the 30 that you already took off in the first day equals 90. So we're asking, they're asking us how many were in the, in the box, how many cups were in the box to begin with. Well, now we just solved it. So distributed property, you got 0 0.50x minus, what's 30 times 15, 0 0.15 is 4.5 equals 90. We're gonna add 4.5 to both sides. Again, get 0.15x equals 94.5. If you divide both sides by 0.15, x equals 630. So the original amount is that. 41, Susan buys, uh, okay. There's no sales tax on the food she buys. She pays for the item and receives 80 cents in change. So what amount of money does she use to pay for the item? So again, this I guess is this was a 2019 question, right before the pandemic. Very, as you can tell, not that complicated of a question, but it was a part two question. It says show your work, so we know it's a part two. It's, I guess it's more about uh, you. You can have a calculator in you. So let's see what show your work would look like for me. Two packages of chicken, price at 12.36. So let me write chicken here. So two packages would be two times 12.36, right, each package. And that means, if you have a calculator, 12.36 times two is 24.72. So that's how much my chicken would cost. Right. Half pound, and then we're doing right, broccoli. So I would write broccoli, and then I would go half or 50 cents, or sorry, 0.5 times 1.98, right, so put a dollar sign here if you want. So 1.98 divided by two, so we get 0 0.98. And if you wanted to, I guess you can write what you're doing here. I don't think that would be necessary. And then one gallon of milk, and then you would write milk, one gallon times 349, and again, this is you showing work, 349. Right, and then the total of you, what you would spend, you would write 24.72 plus 0.99 plus 3.49, and you would write that down plus 0.99 plus 3.49 equals $29.20. So that's your total. Now, if you got 80 cents in change, right? <clears throat> All you have to do is add 80 cents to this value, right, to your total. And obviously, how much did you give the cashier? You gave the cashier 30 bucks. So that's the work that I would be looking for. Okay. And again, tomorrow is all about you showing your work clearly. Okay. So nobody has any doubt of what you're doing. <clears throat>
company starts to track the number of phone calls we received each month, information about the phone calls. Receive the first three months of tracking is listed below. So the first month, so let's write this down. So again, show your work. So first month, so if I'm organizing, I'll write four, two, six, four calls. Then second month, 25% more than the first month. So I would write, you know what, I'm, I don't even have to write calls. I would write, so the second month would be four, two, six, four times 25% more. So think about, I mean, I'm going to go back to my, my box here that we used to do. So here's zero, here's 100%. Your zero calls and gives 4264. Now we add 25% more. Right here's your 25%. So now this becomes 125%. So now what are we multiplying by? We're multiplying 4264 times 1.25. And 4264 times 1.25 gives us 5330. So Second month, that's how many phone calls we made. And then the third month, we received 6,396. So what's the percent of increase on the, uh, in the number of phone calls from the second month oh, to the third month? So the percent of increase. So we needed to find this number because now we're going to compare. So again, new minus old over old. So percent of change, right? Obviously, it was a positive to give the number of calls went up, so this is going to be a positive answer. So our new number is 6,396. The old number was 5,330 over old, 5,330. Obviously, we're going to get a <coughs> positive number because it's a, and don't forget, times 100. So in your calculator, 6396 minus 5330 equals 1066 over 5330. I'm just going to do a step by step. I'm going to divide that by 5330, which is going to give me 0 0.2. <clears throat> if you multiply that by 100, you get 20%. So. From here, once you have this, right, you establish this, you, this would be the next work, show your work part. And that's obviously the answer. Okay. Uh, I don't know why this keeps popping up, but 30 and a half, 30 and one fifth, 30 point, sorry, 30 and one fifth, 30 point uh, two, however you want to write it. Miles, two thirds of an hour. We want the unit rate. Um, so, unit rate means in one hour how many miles was driven. So, again, you can write divide by two thirds, or you can say multiply by the reciprocal. It's the same thing. So it's your choice which one you choose. Okay. Um, and again, if you div so if you show divide by two thirds, you're going to divide the top by two thirds. If you show that you're multiplying by the reciprocal, which is three over two, you also show you're multiplying by the reciprocal. It's really up to you. You can do both same thing. So two thirds divided by two thirds is one, or two thirds times three over two is one. And then on top, thirty point. If you, I, I'm going to keep it as a fraction because two thirds is not a. Uh, Terminating decimal, so I'm gonna write in my calculator 30 and 1 over 5 divided by 2 thirds. And we get 45 and 3 tenths of a mile. So that's your unit rate or the average miles per hour. Okay. Please all show your work, show your work. All right. Start order of pictures. Each picture costs seven fifty. A one-time shipping fee is three twenty-five. The total cost, the total cost of the order before tax is eighty-five seventy-five. How many pictures did total 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 order? So seven fifty 
times or 750 times x, x representing the number of pictures he, uh, he ordered, plus the shipping fee, 325. All that equaled 8575. So how many pictures did he order? Okay, so again, this one is number of pictures. That's your equation. So I'm pretty sure that if this was the question, they would be looking for your setup here, one version or a version of this equation, and then you solving it. That goes away. We get 750x equals whatever that is, 85.75 minus 3.25. It's 82.5. Oops. Divide by 7.5. Divide by 7.5. X equals 11. So the norm, and then you would write the number of pictures that Todd order was 11. All right. 45, museum employee, oh, I remember this question. So he surveys 350 people, random people, of those visitors, 266 stopped at a gift shop. So he took a little sample, and in his sample, 266 people out of the 350 people went to the gift shop, right? Now he wants to know, well, today we're going to have about 2,300 visitors. How many of those should we expect to go to the gift shop? Well, right, remember, I'm using, a, I'm using the sample here, right, to predict what my population will do. So times 2,300, and whatever that is, 266 over 350, times 2,300, will that give me an exact number? It does. So 1,748. So obviously, right, you might want to add a few sentences here. Right, this is the, how many people in the survey went to the gift shop, and you're gonna use that to predict and multiply by the number of visitors that's gonna come throughout the day. So the total of 2,300 to predict how many people are going to come to the gift shop? Okay, this one's actually pretty simple. Candy store. What is this? So it's caramel. Show the total cost in dollars per pound. How much more is one and three fourths milk chocolate than one three fourths caramel? I mean, I don't get these questions because they're just really multiplying and subtracting. I so I'm not. All right, so let's do the milk chocolate. Not enough. Well, it shows up. It shows up better. Milk chocolate. You buy one and three fourths pound. If you want to change that to a decimal, you can. So 1.75 pounds times, and milk chocolate is 1280. So 1.75 times 1280 per pound uh, times 1.75. That gives us a total of $22.40. So that's how much you would pay for 1.75 pounds of milk chocolate and if you bought caramels and you bought the same exact 1.75 pounds or 1 3 fourth pounds but caramels a little bit cheaper it's 9.28 per pound so 1.75 times 9.28 and that gives us 16.24 which more expensive of course the milk chocolate because it costs more per pound right so now what's the difference how much more? You would do 22.4 minus 16.24. And you get $6.16. And that's the difference. At a grocery store, the price of a watermelon is determined how many pounds the watermelon weighs. So the price depends on the weight. So here is price depends on weight, right? So that makes this my dependent, makes this my independent, which makes this my y and this my x, just saying. Um, so the price of a watermelon weighs, uh, weighs three and a half, three point um, seven pounds and four dollars and 38 cents. So, Write an equation, 
that can be used to determine the price P in dollars of any watermelon based on the number of pounds W. So instead of X and Y, we're going to use P and W. So P is my total cost and W is my weight. Same thing. Um, so what's the equation here? So we can do K equals Y over X. And K is the price. So here the price is $4.38. And what's my weight? 7.3 pounds of watermelon. I've seen a few watermelons out there. So 4.38 divided by 7.3, that gives you 0 0.6. 0 0.6 is my cost of proportionality, which means what? That my equation is y equals 0 0.6x. We're going to change it to P and W uh, in a second. And that also means my unit rate means that It's 0 0.6 cents for one pound of watermelon. But what are they oh, they're looking for the equation? So y is the same thing as p, so we can write p equals 0 0.6 w, right? Every pound of that watermelon. So I think the equation is p equals 0 0.6 w. Okay. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, that's it.